my new Chanel bag. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how much better this actually goes with the interior. Rose, what are you doing? I'm imitating the sound of people's necks breaking whenever they see Project LSJ Fierro. Necks breaking. <laughs> see you at Gapplebee's. guys and welcome back to the channel it is a beautiful sunny day here in the state of Washington and with the weather getting increasingly nicer we're gonna get back to regular uploads and working on the project car if you're anything like me you really don't want to be wet and cold while you're working on your car so I didn't <laughs> let me do that again so I so I didn't the later hand, we are also very curious what you guys did this winter. So if you started any projects or if you completed anything, make sure you leave a comment down below so that we know what you guys have been doing. If you worked on your car or if you did something fun and outrageous, I wanna know what it was and how you spent your winter and what the weather was like where you were at. All right, so today everything is gonna be basically a pile up of things that I've been collecting and we've been building up over the winter to install electric power steering in our LSJ Fiero. The red line came with electric power steering and the LSJ Fiero is actually complaining constantly that there's no power steering unit in it because it thinks it should have one. Here is a Fiero steering column modified by West Coast Fieros with the LSJ's power steering unit mounted to the bottom of it. We're going to be replacing our steering column with this column, and then that is going to give us speed sensitive power steering for forever, I guess. Taking the car into a sort of more modern era. Replacing a steering column isn't all that showy and doesn't really feel like you did something when you're sitting in the interior of the car. So we also got a custom steering wheel. And I was a part of the designing committee between Alex and I, but I haven't even seen this. It's still sitting in a box, unopened. So we haven't even seen it. And it's been sitting here for like two months, three months almost. Remember when we got it and I said, don't open the box. <laughs> and you're like, why don't we open the box? I'm like, because we want to open the box with everybody. Yeah. This is an open us the box thing. with you. We're <laughs> all in this together. What are we doing now? Well, before we can get into it, we have to do a costume change. All right, let's get into it. So before we open the box, we wanna give a big thank you to Alex Babineau with Irrationables Garage. You can find him on Instagram. He designed and created this beautiful steering wheel for us. So we wanna say thank you, Alex, for all of your time and hard work really excited to see it for those of you who don't know of alex he is just a hobbyist in making these steering wheels because the fiero community really needed somebody who was going to be doing this and i haven't seen something i didn't like yet this was his last uh amount of beechwood leather that he had left yeah. always with the beechwood being so hard to get Go. We'll make sure we put all this information down below. He also repaints and refinishes the center of the steering columns as well. Wow. It's so heavy. There's that word again. Are steering wheels always this heavy or do I just never realize this that? This is a triple padded steering wheel. This is thicker than a factory steering wheel. Like, it is really thick. That's what she said. And this cute little stripe. 
it's a 12 o'clock center line so yep. you know where your steering wheel is when you're mad auto crossing right oh <laughs> the color on this is absolutely beautiful do you like my new chanel bag <laughs> okay so i'm going to show you guys how much better this actually goes with the interior of the car so you can see it against here and of course it is a little bit darker but i don't know overall i like the way this looks way better than the original steering wheel for sure well that steering wheel's from an 86 it's not beechwood so it fails in that interestingly enough i think that because of how old this is, I think that this is pretty close to Dark Saddle. It's more like a chestnut or something, right? It's called chocolate. Chocolate! <laughs> It'll help you live forever. Comment down below if you watch Spongebob. And, Dude, are and, you looking at the back of the steering column and the metal that got polished or what? media blast you guys would have had to seen the rusty core that i sent him i sent him like literally the worst gt steering wheel i had which is saying something yeah because it's way better uh and and this is the best one i've ever seen yeah and the way that all this padding feels versus this this is like floating on air for my hands mm. my hand game is strong mm. for you ladies out yeah there. it is Somebody's gonna censor us. <laughs> you know what we're gonna need for that? Tools. All right, you guys, before we go any further, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification so you get all of the notifications when we upload videos! <laughs> Job just got easier. There's only one screw holding this bad boy together. Calm down. Calm, calm down, guys. Calm down. <laughs> All right, so once you drop the column down, you're gonna have your ignition switch wiring. That's gonna be the last thing to get out. And uh, it never comes out smoothly for me because I am not always good at things. I just make it look like that through editing. Oh, it did come out. Ah. All hail the PB blast that loosens all things very corroded and rusty. Okay, so before I go unbolting anything, I want to give you guys the rundown on what is actually different between these two steering racks right here. And the clear and main difference is that this one has this motor and this control box. And this allows it to have electrical assistance while steering the wheel, simply put. And we're missing some bolts, so I'm going to steal a bolt. That bolt is a sad bolt. Mm, not that sad of a bolt. The, this is it's between these two. What do you want? What are you doing, Rose? Eating, because it was exhausting taking out those three screws. One of the parts that had to get changed out was the intermediate shaft, and 
it's one of the last pieces of rusty parts that's entering the interior of the car after the column's gone. And it was horrible to get out. I didn't really film it because I was cursing and screaming the whole time. Part of owning a Fiero is putting your wife someplace uncomfortable. I should be able to clear my feet, sort of. Here is the really spring-loaded sheath that I have to pull back and then I had to pound out the old one somehow with a pry bar and then pound the new one in and now I'll put the bolt back in there. I had to re-loosen the column in order to make room to get the intermediate shaft in there. And then I could not get the intermediate shaft to mate. So I decided to bust out the old Tanya Harding. Even this seemed like it wasn't enough. Finally, the bolt started threading. It's in. So I've been hiding this power steering data cable back behind here, behind the carpet. But can I just give myself a hand for making this wiring harness and making this cable so perfect in length that everything is tucked up into here? I mean, how often do you see a custom car where there's just wiring everywhere not here. Nope. In case we're wondering. This goes there. After getting the new column in the car, I had to get the lock cylinder out of the old column so that we'd have the same ignition key. The new column didn't have a lock cylinder in it. Off camera, I had to pull everything apart in order to install the lock cylinder into the car before the steering wheel went on. All right, you guys. It is time for this glorious moment. I call it the moment of truth, but we all know this is gonna work. So, because everything on this build goes perfect all of the time. <laughs> Lift it and center it until it drops down. A little piece of plastic will come through like that. There you go. Then there's a nut right by the Mountain Dew. I'm a big fan of nuts. That's nut and futz. That's nut appropriate, Rose. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't think I can no. turn it on anymore personally. I think that, that's fine. It's fine. It's on. Okay, so rotate the black thing? Yeah, just black, uh, just the black thing. Rotate it, okay. And well, it stays in, and that's yeah. it. I, I pressed the thing. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, horn works. Horn works. The car is very horny. Okay. All right, wait for the error message. There's no error message. Oh, yeah, there's no error message because everything on this build is fucking perfect and flawless all the time, right? Is it weird? You're, yeah, because you're telling me I don't have to hoist my body over a steering wheel <laughs> to turn my car at this point. Like, well, I will get. It'll keep the steering wheel cleaner because you don't have to grip it so hard. <laughs> yeah. So like this is strange, like wacko yakko stuff. I am not upsetty spaghetti about this. No espresso depresso. 
It's pretty cool. All right, you guys, so that's going to be the end of this episode. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Ciao!